So hyperconnectivity has become a mass phenomenon. And as we carry our smart mobile treasure around, the ones who like to be tempted are always with us as well. It's the news junkie, the fact digger, and sex and crime title tale. It's human's nature to be curious. It's one of our strongest motivators and the desire to be satisfied. Curiosity relates to risks and chances. Curiosity drives emotions and stands behind big questions too. There are things we like to know, things we need to know, and things we get to know just by chance. Without curiosity, great inventions and discoveries would not have happened. We didn't just send a robot to Mars. We sent the most essential, the most valuable, the most human piece of ourselves. We sent our curiosity. That's a quote by Neil deGrasse Tyson. That's an American astrophysician. And that's a selfie sent by Curiosity from Mars. Curiosity on Earth gets easily triggered. We even have turned into slaves of our screen. We see and perceive the world through only this little display. But what remains? What is relevant? <laughs> so all information is not knowledge. And all information doesn't become knowledge. Our time is limited. We only have seven days with 24 hours that will never ever change. Our attention is limited. We remember much less than we think. At the same time, the sea of information is rising exponentially and with tremendous speed. There is a risk of drowning. Help. How come? Why do we do that? One of the reasons is FOMO. FOMO is the fear of missing out. FOMO is the language of the digital natives. That's not me. I'm a digital immigrant, but I got the virus too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but FOMO is nothing new. We always liked to share, to chatter, to be part of daily talks, and also be part of a community. But we never got to know so much from each other instantly. And we even became our own media speakers and our own chief editor. The consequences of this mobile bondage can't yet be fully predicted. The digital re revolution is still too young, but what neuroscience know is that the smartphone relates to our nervous and reward system. Dopamine and other happiness hormones get released and make us feel good, just for a sec fraction of a second or longer. As we unlock the smartphone every moment, we cut our time into slices. We nibble information and news. Our ability to focus shrinks. Face-to-face -face conversations are disrupted easily and our body language changes. It's not about good or bad. It's about being aware of the media triggers and patterns and how strongly they influence our life. I'm a documentary filmer and TV producer and have been working for more than 20 years for Swiss television. And that's my media background and I would like to share what I have learned. It's a kind of Vital stretching between curiosity, relevance, and knowledge. So relevance isn't absolute, and relevance isn't equal to interest. It means to check, to filter, and assess information and news in context of a period of time, and also the proximity to the public, and in competition to other news and information. So what remains? What looks like a camel hunch is the digital life of news. It breaks through the social media with a few words, a picture, or a short video, and only minutes later, news agencies and online portals get to start to publish their stories. More context gets revealed, it's basic information, and the sources are fairly the same. News is now at its top. 
more analysis and reflections follow. So each story has the same pattern. There is a trigger, a growth, a peak, and then a decline. News life is short, after a few hours it's done. But each story has a follow-up, and this gets released, really relaunched just right away. So story after story keeps the crowd online. That's Midas Nature's law, because curiosity in turn means money. The economic value of all user data and traffic is, es is essential for the publishers and social media. So what remains? What is relevant? The more serious and unexpected information is, the longer is the resonance and the stronger. So this impact can last over weeks, months, even years. And during this period of time, our mind is open and seeds can be planted. We start to activate previous knowledge, and there is the striking point, because knowledge meets information, and information turns into knowledge. And what does that mean for us? We can relax. No need to run after life ticker and breaking news every moment. No FOMO, but JOMO. JOMO, the joy of missing out. <laughs> the joy of missing out. Because the most important things we get to know anyway, sooner or later, even, we are, if, even if we are offline for a couple of hours or days. So switch off for a while, enjoy the sweet doing nothing or enjoy curiosity, which goes ways beyond the smartphone, ways beyond. Jomo, thank you.